I'm Jess Carter, I'm the communications lead for the Bristol Housing Festival. I've been working with them for about a year now and the virtual expo has been wonderful to work on. I've been particularly involved with the social housing history timeline and also the community stories feature. I also have a master's in sociology and I'm really fascinated by people's stories and particularly the collective stories of communities and cities. So these projects have been particularly fascinating for me. So the social history timeline has been such an interesting project. Basically on the website we've got this section which um, outlines the social housing from the 1900s all the way up into the present day. And actually it's quite a short history, but we've put together different sections of the key, the key parts of that history that have really been um, we've seen lots of housing developed in a short space of time and we have a little sections called the did you know which will have an interesting fact and then we've got a section that's time for change because what's been really interesting as we've explored the history of social housing particularly in Bristol is that often Bristol as a city has taken the lead and really leaned into innovation and so we've tried to highlight where that innovation has been and where Bristol has done that and so we've got some pictures, we've been diving into the Bristol archives and finding these amazing um, old black and white images of the first houses and, and kind of houses from all the different areas on the timeline. I've had so many interesting chats with people in Bristol who've been looking into this. In fact, the Bristol Festival of Ideas did an amazing showcase a couple of years ago for the anniversary of 100 years of housing. So on their website, there's been a lot of information. I had a great chat with Andrew Kelly and um, the Bristol Know Your Place was also an incredibly amazing resource, just full of pictures and information about each suburb in Bristol, really worth looking at. And actually had a lovely chat with Peter Insull as well. And he showed me his story map that he's created of the interwar period and so it's really been about just drawing information from lots of different sources to, to put together the timeline. I was so fascinated going into the history particularly right at the beginning I mean before 1919 there really wasn't any social housing in Bristol there were no council houses and that was because um, working people didn't have the vote at that stage so before the first world war only men with property were allowed to vote so obviously their priority wasn't property they already had it but after the first world war when working people began to fight for their rights a little bit more and actually were able to vote in the 1918 election and i believe there were some women that were able to vote in that election as well their priority was housing so housing became a massive issue at that time and in that election and that's where lloyd george famously said he was going to build homes for heroes because he knew that actually without good housing you can't have good health and that so many people had gone off to fight in the war and when they got back they deserved to live in in good housing and what was also interesting at that time was before then loads of people were living in slums and in really awful conditions and that was just normal for a lot of people not everybody but for a lot of people and so they developed this um, these standards for what housing should look like and they started to say things that are so obvious to us now like maybe bathrooms should be inside maybe every house should have sunlight maybe they should have three bedrooms maybe the kitchen should be inside not just a fire that we sort of cook over in the middle of one room and that's actually not that long ago and council housing really had such an amazing part to play in building those houses that had those higher standards for people delving into the history of housing um, I realized how important it is to be looking back and how history can just be such an amazing teacher in in any sphere when you look back we can learn so much from what's happened before but I also think that history can inspire us you know we're in the middle of a housing crisis we've also got our climate crisis and construction skills shortage and all of the things the Bristol Housing Festival talks about all the time and we're facing huge challenges but when we look back at some of the challenges that we faced in the past it's so inspiring to see that Bristol actually already knows how to tackle these solutions in a really innovative way. You know, a great example is after the Second World War, there was a huge housing shortage. I believe there were 26,000 people on the list for housing. And, you know, a lot of people had gone off to the war. Um, a lot of people hadn't come home. A lot of Bristol had been bombed and there, there wasn't enough housing for people. And we started to innovate and we built prefabs and we started to experiment with, you know, reinforced concrete and, and finding different building materials. And there's fascinating old pictures. If you have a look on the history um, timeline on our website, you can see the first off-site manufactured homes, which were developed in an airplane manufacturing factory that we used because it was open and it, it was available. That is incredibly innovative. We know how to do this. We actually know how to have solutions. And so I think looking back and seeing 
um, you know, the pictures of people that moved into those prefabs and had these amazing homes and seeing photos of families. And it just shows us that, you know, those homes left a legacy, those innovations left a legacy. And we get to look at that and to build on it and to think about what kind of legacy do we want to leave to the next generation? What innovation will we test now so that the future generations can have homes? Well, the community stories largely started because as a Bristol Housing Festival team, when we were brainstorming for the expo, almost everybody felt like it was really important to be tapping into, you know, what, what do people actually think? What do people want? What are the stories of the communities? And that is such an important priority, just like the very first council houses were about people wanting them that was what people wanted what what they valued but actually now finding out what people value and and how how what community means to them is is still really important and so we just wanted to reach out and to find out you know what people had to say and particularly we've had we've all had a, a really difficult year it's been a pandemic year people have been under lockdown communities had to look really different and what we really wanted to draw out as part of that was how has community been a strength to people during this time and we heard some phenomenal stories of little systems that neighborhoods set up that they could so that they could look after each other and and over and over again people saying how their neighbors had supported them and really been a lifeline to them and so, you know, the community stories were, were meant to be short sort of snippets and insights into what community looks like in Bristol. The community stories have just shown us that creating places that actually build resilient communities is really, really important, that it's very easy to build homes. And I know Jez and Jesse always talk about the fact that, you know, you can, you can build homes really quickly and particularly with new innovations. Maybe there's an opportunity to build things really fast and really cheaply, but that's not the goal, that actually what, what's coming through from all of these stories and even what's you know, shown, we've, the history shows us, is that what people are looking for is a place that they can call home and a community where they can, they can grow with other people, where they're not just lonely sitting by themselves, not knowing their neighbors, but actually where they get to connect to others and, and have green space and um, have easy ways to, to create community, but that's a real priority. And so in that, when we look to innovate and we look to um, even build sustainably, the heart of that has to be places that foster communities. I think the social history timeline and the community stories features both just really bring into sharp focus that there's so much to celebrate about our communities, there's so much to celebrate about people and I think sometimes when we look at problems it's very easy to be very negative, it's very easy to get caught up in what's not possible but when you talk to people and you celebrate what's already happening you it's much easier to, to realise we've already got so much going for us and so much is possible and um, I found that really encouraging looking at both of those. When you talk to enough people about a city and just about their personal experience, themes really start to emerge and you start to get a bit of a sense of, you know, what is the DNA of our city or what is the DNA of particular communities? Because just like we have a personal identity, we also have a community identity. And I live in the Dings, and one of my favorite interviews was from one of my neighbors, Nola, who talked about how the Dings builds community intentionally and, and how they so value being able to knock on each other's doors or be able to draw on each other and yet not to be intrusive, but to set up you know, community events that invite the children in. And um, she said, you know, she's got a five-year-old friend and a 82-year-old friend and, and how community really is such an important part of, of our city. So I think the themes that have emerged of how important community is to people in our city. We want to live in homes that are connected to each other. We want to know the neighbors. We want to know the person that runs the shop down the road, that actually having that kind of village feeling in um, our communities is really important to the people of our city. There's so many places I feel like we could take both of these. I would love to continue to grow the community stories. There's so many more voices to be heard. And especially, I think, to go into particular neighborhoods and start to collect stories of, of those, kind of the collective story of, of each neighborhood would be really, really interesting. Um, so we're hoping to, to grow that. Um, there's also lots of communities that aren't just neighborhoods that are interesting to look into. We did do some of that for, for this feature. So we had a Pilates community and a work community and you know groups of people that have come together for different reasons. And I know that in Bristol there's, there's so many communities like that that um, would be lovely to gather stories from about how they're coming together and um, strengthening each other. 
with the social history timeline, I would love to see that expanded. There's so many stories within those stories, and particularly um, I've had some fascinating conversations with people about you know, during the 60s and 70s when they started working on positive action um, in housing associations and starting to you know, change things within that system that are really interesting. And, and so well, I'd love to, to grow some of that as well. I think what I, one of the things I found really interesting just looking at the history is how actually politically there have been you know, changes in um, the priority of housing over the years as the different you know administrations have changed and yet you know that looked like um, at first you know the houses in the 20s the council houses were beautiful houses with parlors and they were really desirable to live in and then the conservative government said but those are too expensive for the people that really need them we need to build them smaller so that we can have the people that are actually need housing the most make them affordable for them and so houses were a little bit smaller and then um, Labour came back in and said everybody should have a council house that you know the, the city should be the major renter and we should have the farmhand and the grocer and the doctor all living in the same street and what struck me was that even even when it came to you know right to buy in the 80s which changed how everything was done in terms of council housing it was always the, it was always a dream and an ideal that somebody had to improve and make things better for people and I think that's what I love to see you know happening at the Bristol Housing Festival and throughout Bristol and you know throughout the expo we've had all these conversations with people who want to see the city made better um, for the people and that's been really inspiring for me. I just want to add that actually we get to choose the attitude that we have towards housing and towards all of the problems that we face in our city and and as well as that the um the perspective of things i noticed that you know at first there was such a happy narrative around council housing and then that sort of shifted in the 70s and 80s to become quite a negative thing and i think that we have the power to to direct that narrative as a city as well that we get to choose as we build new innovative places to put a really positive narrative on that there are so many exciting projects that are happening at the moment. We're watching the Hope Rise development unfold. There's an amazing mural that was designed by, you know, the residents of that of that area. And if everybody gets involved and actually takes ownership for the story, there there's a really beautiful story that we can continue to write in this city.